Imagine you've built a movie streaming app. You use MongoDB as your data store, and as you needed to scale, you implemented caching using Redis. This allowed you to drastically speed up reads. However, now you're experiencing slowness when writing to MongoDB. For example, maybe you want to allow users to continue watching movies where they last left off. This would require you to store the timestamp of where a user is when they decide to pause the movie. With millions of users, this is starting to cause MongoDB to slow down when you have peaks in demand. What you need is a way of flattening the peaks in demand, allowing you to write data quickly and then persist it to MongoDB when the demand dies down. What you need is called the write behind pattern. The pattern is simple. Your application writes data to Redis and then asynchronously data gets written to MongoDB. Write operations are queued up so the application can move on quickly and the cache can catch up over time. However, this does mean there is a short time when the data between the cache and the system of record is inconsistent. Consider this pattern when you need to flatten peaks in demand, batch multiple write operations, or reduce the load on your system of record. Let's see how this works in code. I'm going to show you how to use the write behind capability of Redis to store the watch history for a user in the users collection in MongoDB. Redis allows for programmability of Redis server similar to how you might set up triggers in a SQL database. You can program Redis using Redis gears and Python. Here I have a Python file and I'm using the built-in recipe for write behind caching to MongoDB. I set up the MongoDB connection URL which I'll programmatically modify later to replace with the connection string. Then I get the MongoDB connection, I specify the database name, create the connector that will map users in Redis to users collection in MongoDB. Finally, I call the right behind recipe and tell it to look for all the keys with the users prefix. Next, I'm using Node.js to set up my gears recipe and test it with some sample data. To set up the recipe, I first define the Python dependencies, then I read the Python code I just wrote from the file, making sure to replace the MongoDB connection URL with the connection string from my environment variables. Next, I format the parameters for the rg.py execute command. Then, I send the command to Redis to install the recipe. Next, I'm going to write the setWatchHistory function. This will take in a watch history object that stores the movie ID and a number corresponding to the number of minutes watched. The function also takes in a user ID that I can use to search Redis. First, I format the key that I use in Redis. Note the user's prefix matches the one we set up in our Python file. Next, I need to check if the user exists. Since this is a contrived example, I'm going to do this here, but in the real world you might not need to do this. Next. I read the user JSON object out of Redis. Then I merge the watch history values of the existing user with the new watch history object. As a user watches more movies, they will all be reflected in the watch history object. And that's it. You might take note that we're not directly writing anything to MongoDB. This is because the gears recipe will take care of that for us. To test this, we'll connect to Redis, flush any existing data, install our gears recipe, and then call setWatchHistory three times for the same user. The expected result should be that we have a user JSON object in Redis with a watch history that has two movie timestamps in it, and an equivalent user object in the users collection in MongoDB. Let's run this and then use Redis Insight and MongoDB Compass to check the results. In Redis Insight, you can see the two keys. One is the user JSON object and the other is a stream. The JSON object looks as expected with the watch history object. The reason we have a stream is because Redis Gears uses a stream to batch the commands it needs to send to MongoDB. This is all well and good, but did the data really make it to MongoDB? Let's check. In MongoDB Compass, I'm looking at the user's collection. I started with nothing in my database, therefore nothing in the user's collection, but now when I refresh the data, I see my user with the expected watch history object. Remember, the write behind pattern is useful when you need to speed up or batch write operations and reduce the load on your system of record. 
If you're interested in learning more about storing data, searching, and improving the performance of MongoDB apps, check out our ebook that covers three design patterns to speed up MERN applications. The link is in the description down below.